Even though I fought fiercely, my body performed smoothly thanks to my recent maintenance. The fake Yukun and uh, fallen uh, has fallen to the ground. My fallen's final strike, and its form begins to block, bubble into a black ooze as it loses its form. It really was a shadow. The may uh, what did I say? The melting Yukun suddenly spits out balls of golden light. These orbs pass through the gold school gate and fly towards the top of the tower, uh, looming over the school building. The sounds of our battle echo away, and the sounds of almost the area again. Koromaru! Labrasan! Kenkun! Koromaru-san! I'm overcome with surprise as Kenkun makes his way to me. Koromaru-san has been out of Kenkun's side, but he dashes over to me. I'm so glad you're safe. Is something wrong? Kenkun has a weird expression. Even though the fake Yukun had been the shadow, his harsh words come from what appeared to be Yukun's face and it still left me agitated, but... Nah. I'm okay. I won't be deceived any longer. We have to wait. What? Uh, we have to save the others and solve the case. Susan can. I'm trying to look at something right now. Her hair. If you look at the the top of her head. Uh, or at least her ponytail. What the fuck is that? Is that a ribbon or something? That does. That's. It looks like it's connected to her headphones. It's, it's weird. Kenkun uh, seems to notice my resolve and not. If anything comes up, please feel free to talk to me about it. That is, if you're okay with sharing it. Ah, uh, my dick. Friendship. I think Ken could end up, and then suggest that we compare whatever information we got it up until then. The enemy seems to be using fake ma uh, fakes made from the shadows to uh, challenge us to fight. Ken could report that he encountered a copy of himself, but he was able to be saved by Kanji Kane and Nachiko in the second time. Thank goodness, you can his friends have noticed the strange situation that had this down. I decided to tell Ken what happened a moment ago, including my own niece as well. I see. That must have been tough. Yeah. I got to wondering what I would do if the real Yukun thought the same way. And that got me all scared. <sighs> it's difficult to truly believe in other people. Kenkun? It would be easy for me to say that he'd never think that way about you. But people are weak. They can't help but believe in things that make life easier for them. That's only deceiving yourself, though. You need to have resolve if you want to learn the truth. Even if that means getting hurt yourself. You three times the truth! Resolve. If you're worried about the truth, then I believe you should go to him directly and find out how he feels. Otherwise, you'll never be true friends. Man, he knows. Ken knows. Ken Kun. Oh, I'm sorry for being so impolite. It's easy to tell others to learn unpleasant truths, but it's more like I'm trying to convince myself. <sighs> Formato stare, uh, stares up to, up to me. Or stop, stares up at me. I feel that he's telling uh, me what Kenkun's saying is right. I should find out for myself. If Yukun and his friends are headed there as well, I'll see them eventually. I shouldn't use I should use that time too. I see. A relationship between two people cannot be what? formed until they speak their minds to one another. Doing so requires this resolve. Who's that? What? We stand ready at the sun voice. Oh the Theodore! Oh, okay. Mani! A silver-haired man wearing dark blue clothing stacks from the shadows of the school gate. Where did he come from? My radar didn't detect him at all. Wait, I'm still not detecting him? Who are you? Ah, how truly rude of me. My name is Theodore. I didn't intend to eavesdrop on you. But, as I wandered in search of Cola, <laughs> I found myself here. That blue costume. Are you connected to Elizabeth? Such, such a vibrant shade of blue, his distinctive clothing looks familiar. Elizabeth, the girl who I met during the previous case, who also helped me remember a number of things. She appeared in my dream earlier today, too, and some deeply meaningful things before disappearing. And said some deeply meaningful things before disappearing. That man standing there has an air similar to hers. My! So you know of my sister. Um, Labrasan, is this person an enemy? Mm, probably not. Probably not. Elizabeth helped me realize a ton of stuff, but... Well, she came on a little strong sometimes. Oh? Was she rude to you? She once forced me to eat a large quantity of cinnamon, and I thought my mouth was going to be desiccated forever. <laughs> cinnamon challenge. C cinnamon? Uh, please, don't worry about it. It is merely a bittersweet page from our youths. Uh, I see. Oh, right. My name's Labris. This is Kenkun and Karamaru-san. Um, they're my... Well, it's nice to meet you, Theodore. We're Labrasan's comrades. Comrades. <laughs> that word. <laughs> bothers me so much. 
no, um, really thank did. you for the polite introductions. It is a pleasure to meet you. Comrade, that was embarrassed, but the way Ken can say it without any hesitation warms my heart. I do have a the what? I do have a many did that say many? Many comrades right now who are with me. The way they are interacting with me naturally makes me think that perhaps I'm the only one who minds what I am. I feel like such a fool for being so anxious. I can't help but smile. By the way, on a different subject, has anyone seen my sister Elizabeth anywhere? Elizabeth? Nah. The last time I saw her was in a dream. I haven't seen her around here. Is that so? There's something I was meaning to ask her if I managed to find her. I saw traces of cinnamon along the road here, so I thought that she might have come this way. <laughs> cinnamon! Elizabeth is here? She said she, in her dream that she was searching for power. If that she happens to come across this town while it's in such a special situation, wouldn't it make sense that she would come to this tower? Come to this tower? Ah, please forgive me. It seems I've detained you for too long. Please, do not be alarmed. I have no intention of getting in your way. Oh, that's right! We need to hurry! Labrasan, shall we get going? Huh? But don't we have to wait for you, Kari-san? Do you remember what that General Teddy said when he showed up on the monitor? Oh, if we don't fight and win the P1 Climax within an hour, the world will end. Yes, that's why I think it's important we rescue Mitsuru-san and the others as quickly as possible. Yukari-san will be fine. Junpei-san's strong, too, after all. Can't you sure that Yukari and Junpei will be all right. Is that what it means to believe in others? All right, let's go. See you, Theodore. Please, take care. Still, where am I to obtain this cola? Theodore walks away, mumbling to himself, and then the three of us head to the school building. That was, well, Theodore. I like Theodore. He's a nice guy. Are we done here? Please? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is going to end up being another hour one, isn't it? God damn it. When we enter the school building, we find out the red fox has filled the halls as well, ruining our visibility. The hallway seemed to go on forever, and the classroom lining both sides are distorted. Though this is similar to the way the building had been in the TV world, the red fox it increases the creepiness tenfold. The fog even mutes our footsteps as we proceed. As we walk along, Kormaru son growls. Yeah. Kurumaru-san, it would seem there's someone inside this classroom. The door, meaning the music room, is slightly ajar and the fog is pouring through the crack. I put my hand on the door, Kenkun and I silently nod to one another. I throw open the door and Kenkun and Kurumaru-san uh, rush inside. I follow them. Who is it? <clears throat> Akihiko! The center of the music room is crossed, just like the ones we saw on the monitor in the helicopter. The person tied to it is Akihiko-san? <clears throat> Sonata-san, we'll get you down at once! Who... <sighs> Ken? Genkun rushes over to the cross and unbinds the Akihiko-san. Akihiko-san is quite weak, and he stumbles once he is released from the ropes. Genkun and I hold, up, hold him up on our shoulders. <clears throat> Thanks for saving me, Ken. Labrus. And Koromaru, too? Sorry to barge in on you. I couldn't wait to hear your story, so I came here. <laughs> I'm glad you're so impatient. Sorry about this. I'm glad you're safe now. Where are the others? Ah, am I late again? Sorry, guys. My bad. I turn around surprised that a sudden voice from behind us. A man wearing a, black, a backwards baseball cap is standing at the music room door. Oh, hey! Ken and Koromaru! And, um, are you Labrus? Junpei-san, it's been a long time. The music is obviously calling the East Shadow Junpei. Did you run into Yukari-san along the way? Junpei-san, beginning personal personnel scan. Identified. Junpei Iori, as I thought he is another of Mitsuri-san's comrades since high school. He is currently listed as a member of the auxiliary staff of Shadow Robbers. Glad? You're glad about stealing the limelight from me? What? Kenko's expecting change. He quietly moves his spear in a combat position. Scanning. Subject confirmed as a shadow. Yep. You're on to me already, huh? Oh well, I wasn't gonna try to hide it anyway. <laughs> I've never faced June Pace on before. <laughs> Kenkun laughs to himself and takes a step forward. Kormaru-san stands close to him. 
Seeing the two of them ready for battle makes me blurt out my doubts. Hey, Cancun, are you okay with fighting somebody who looks just like one of your buddies? I mean, aren't you afraid? Like, what if that's the real one? Cancun smiles at me. He then explains himself in a tone of voice that makes it feel silly for a doubting him. That's a silly question, Labrasan. Even if it did turn out to be the real Junpei-san, if I'm truly being challenged, then I can never back down. Truly challenged? Yes. When it comes down to it, I will stand up and fight for anything I truly believe in. Even if I must do so against my own companions. <laughs> Looks like you're finally learning to talk like that, Ken. <gasps> Akihiko-san! Labrys, let me tell you something. Even if the enemy you face is someone you once counted as a friend, in a battle for your beliefs, the bonds formed between true comrades will never break. Why is it comrades? Why not friends? This is gonna bother me though this whole freaking recording. Uh, are, are you trying, trying to bore me to submission? Let's, Let's get, get this, this over with already. already. Bring, Bring on the ring! ring. Can I be Akihiko? Uh, oh yes, my friend. Oh yes. <laughs> the fake jerk son summons the red pills. Akihiko-san looks confused for a moment, but can't explain the rules though. <sighs> Selfish rules as always. No! Normally I'd take him on. But let me take That's a quick break Akihiko. from the fighting for now. Yes, please rest, Sonata-san. So we can only can handle pick Ken or Labrys, I'm assuming? Akihiko-san smiles happily and takes a step back. Kenko stands firmly in front of the shadows as a, uh, shadow as it takes the position. This is all so powerful that this young man looks strong even to me. But I can't forget that I'm a shadow robber as well. I can do it too! No, moment not say. I'm being canceled. I didn't get to do it in kill. The last video I played is canceled. You go see. I'm gonna try my best to do it this time. Actually, yeah, I'll try some combo. Like I know, I'll try my best not to use the speed. It's only the speed. And I'll try my best not to use the burst. I will burn my bridge. Oh, let's go. Finally, the final battle. There you go. The best this one in the game. Now's not the time for me to give up. Baptism of light and darkness is what it's called, and it is great. It's literally the coolest thing in this game. <laughs> well, one of them. This game is freaking cool to the max. Gonna belt again, yep. Cracks form in the red pillars as the crumbled gel that vanished entirely. At the same time, the form of the fake Junfei son melt into a black vortex. See, he, she sees it differently as well. The proof that we have been fighting a fake makes me feel like we'll eat. Are you alright, Sonata san? Yeah, I wish I could say I was, but I'm pretty exhausted. I won't be able to call on my persona for a while. I guess that cross drains the spiritual energy from whoever's stuck DSP. on it. Oh shit. Kromaris on Spark speaks up as they're trying to get our attention. There remains of the shadow swirling around the center of the room. We see small black lights that rise into the void above the room. Weird. The same thing happened to the fake Yukum too. It's flowing up. Does that mean it's being collected somehow? What in the world is that? There's something else that I've noticed. Everyone in Inaba aside from us Persona users has vanished. Doesn't that remind you of the Dark Hour and Tartarus? That's ominous. If I remember right from last time we were here, the enemy was trying to turn Personas into shadows and collect their power. And we know all too well what happens when shadows gather in Tartarus. sonata son, immediately after we reached Inaba, we were attacked by someone who looked very similar to Ikutsuki. Ikutsuki? That's impossible. We saw him. Yes, though I don't know if it was really him. But one of the Persona users from Inaba, Naudosan, knew about Ikutsuki. The detective, huh? <laughs> so they're running around out there, too. Indeed. 
I wanted to find an explanation to this situation as soon as possible, so we shared what we knew with each other. This is their town. No matter how much we might try to stop them, they have the right to protect this place. Mitsuru knows that, at least. Though it seems like she was trying to bear the entire burden herself again. And they're all incredibly skilled, too. If we can meet up with them, we'll be able to solve this case that much quicker. You made the right call, Ken. Thank you. <sighs> Kutsky, huh? If he's really behind this, then we're at even more of a disadvantage. Sorry, Ken, but let me make sure I've got it all straight. Now that Akiko sounds like his sentence somewhat, we both explain the sequence of events we've experienced up to this point. <clears throat> so we fell right into the enemy's trap and got ourselves captured. <laughs> How careless of us. Oh god. There's no time to waste here. Akiko sounds far from his normal condition, but he appears to have recovered enough to be able to walk on his own. We leave the music room and decide to look for some stairs that we, that we, so we can head up. Since there are, uh, remain, since there remain fakes, uh, uh, since the remains of other fakes were all going upwards, we conclude that there must be something above us that they're all going on, going to. By the way, Sonata-san, how have Mitsuru-san and the others been? I haven't seen them in a while. I hadn't seen her in a long time till I got back either. But don't worry, she hasn't changed at all. If anything, she seemed even more dreadful. <laughs> I see. I don't know if I should feel relieved or worried. What? Does Mitsuru-san scare you two? She's always really nice to me. You just don't know how frightening she can be. Try getting hit with that kick of hers. You won't eat normally for a week. <laughs> She's very intense. And that's coming from me. Now that I think about it, I can't believe she was just a high school student when we met. Huh. If that's the case, then I'll try asking her to start being nicer to you two. You can't. Don't. <laughs> you don't have to get so flustered, you know? <laughs> <laughs> These two have been so calm and rational when confronted with the fake. Don't they, son? Seeing them so distraught over the, uh, over the thought of this, I can't help but laugh. I knew son and Ken son, a Ken can smile with embarrassment. And Karamaru son walks on cool, coolly as if, he was, <laughs> if this was no concern of his. It must be rather difficult to have to act against what you feel. Okay. Fun time. And so we continue. I feel like this ended up being me going onto the, the right path for some reason. The path that was on the right of you when I clicked on. It looks like it was. If it is, I'm gonna be mad. They didn't want this shit. Oh, I can continue Yukuris now. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I was right. I didn't want this to happen. I just wanted to play that. I didn't want to continue on freaking Lavises, which was much longer than anticipated, actually. Uh, so, next episode, it's either uh, Akihiko or Yukari. I think we're going to do Yukari because it seems like uh, she's a bit more behind on Aki than Akihiko's story. It seems like she's not even in Tartarus yet. So, uh, we're going to go to her, and then we'll do her uh, about five. And then we'll continue with Akihiko, which will probably end up being very long and going up to here. And then, uh, the end. We're not that far from being finished now. So let's, we'll see you guys next time. It's got to be F, maybe? Out.